Well, let's look at the proc directory. So the proc directory is a directory that is kind of interfaced to the kernel. So it hasn't always been there, but it's a newer thing. Uh, well, years, but newer. If I go to the proc directory, I can take a look at it and see there's lots of files here. If I do an ls by itself, you can see all these blue things that are numbers. These things right here are all process ID numbers. For example, if I type in PS, you can see my process ID is 3411. And if I look at the 3411, 3411 right here, you can see it's the bash. So if I go in there, CD 3411, and take a look, I can see information about what's actually running here. And so you can see that the command, the executable is user bin bash. The command right there is 3411. And uh, the command line right here, you can see how it was started up. So if I cat that out, cat cmd align, you can see, well, it was started up using the bash command. No arguments. It doesn't actually make it very clean. Sometimes the arguments get all smashed together. There's just hidden characters and so that. But you can get an idea of what happened. You can also look at things like, well, what was the environment or what is the environment that's currently set? So let's see environ right here. So if I cat that out, you can see, oh, this is the environment that is running that process. All right. So one for each one. And you can see a bunch of different numbers, processes that are running. All right. Okay, next let's take a look at some things here. You have uh, different text files that have information such as CPU info and mem info. I like both of these. So let's take a look at CPU info. So less CPU info. And this is a dynamically created file. It's not actually there, it's just virtual file. But uh, I can see that I have a processor, processor zero, which is listed as a genuine Intel. And you can see what type of Intel CPU it is. And I can scroll down and see processor number one. So the second processor is genuine Intel as well. Same thing. So I've got two processors. There's no other processors here. But you can get information about what's going on, the flags on the uh, CPU, the speeds. Um, it's pretty fast. Um, anyway, so CPU info. Next, let's take a look at the mem info. Mem info tells me the amount of total memory I have. You can see I have right here about four gigabytes of memory, of which 2.3 gigs are free and 2.9 are available. So the difference between available and free is basically if it's available, it is marked as being available, but it hasn't been cleared out yet. So if I really needed it, it would clear it out. But if I don't need it, it might have stuff that's sitting there waiting just in case I start up another process that requires it. So if I run a program and the program might be run again, it might leave it in memory just in case it wants to access it again. Uh, then you have your swap total. So swap down here. I have four gigs of swap memory and none of that's being used. So that's great, it's all free. Swap is hard drive space that is used in place of memory if you run out of memory. So if I needed to run a four gig process or a four gigabyte of memory process, uh, it might take up all this and then it might need to start using some swap space to keep itself going. So, but then it just really slows down badly because swap is slow. It's hard drive versus, well, RAM chips. All right. So there are other things in here. Maybe I want to see the version of the kernel. So I can take a look at that. I can cut out my version. And you can see which version of the kernel I'm running. I can see I'm running Linux 6.4. And it has information about the kernel and what built it and stuff like that. And which features are in that kernel. There's lots of other files in here you can take a look at and they're kind of fun. But then there's some directories in here as well. So let's take a look at the sys directory. If I go into the sys directory, 
So proxys, you can see there are a bunch of subdirectories. All right. One thing that I like to do is take my Linux machine and turn it into some kind of a router. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I use my machine as a masquerading gateway, so doing network address translation, I need to pass things through it. Or if I want to maybe set up some kind of a tunnel, I might need to use some kind of IP forwarding so it can do routing. So I go into the net directory. You can see there is this IPv4. So I go into IPv4 and then there's a bunch of files in here. One of the files I can cat out is IP forward. That is whether or not I'm allowing my machine to forward traffic through it. The nice thing about this is I can change the contents of this file. By changing the contents, I'm actually changing the behavior. So I do echo one and then redirect it or direct it into the IP forward. It might not like that because I'm not root. Then if I do that as root, I'm going to have to maybe, so what's happening is I am, maybe I can run that all as one command, because it's trying to run the echo one as root and then put that into the forward and it doesn't like the command. All right, so if I do a sudo, minus i and then i'm logged as root go to that directory and or maybe i can just do it from here if i do echo one into my proc sys net ipv4 ip forward then i have now changed it all right, now if I were to then cat out that directory or cat out that file, you can see that it's set to one. Now, this allows me to suddenly forward traffic, and so that makes it good. Now, if I wanted to change that regularly on boot time, I wouldn't want to use the cat command. I can actually go to the etc directory, and there is a sysctl, it's actually a sysctl command, ctl. And you can see lots of options and stuff like that, but it actually loads stuff. If I do a man on man sysctl, you can see configure kernel parameters at runtime. And it's got some information here. And well, we can look at different things to look stuff up. And you can see that because it's kind of an example, it's actually a pretty common thing. There's also um, a configuration file, the sysctl.conf. So if I do cat sysctl.conf, you can see it has a sysctl.d directory. But if I do conf, you can add things in here directly. So I can tell it, well, I want to do this would be syskernel sys. RQ. So if I were to look at that, cat out my proc, proc, sys, kernel, oh, I spelled kernel correctly, sys, RQ. I can see it's currently this number, but if I wanted to uncomment that, and then I could put it in there. I could also add another one in here. So I could do, um, so for the, this IP forward thing right here, I would need to call this one net IPv4 IP forward. So if I were to edit that, add that, that file right there, just do nano, Let's scroll down to the bottom. Actually, there's already one here. I can just uncomment this right here, net ipv4 .iv underscore forward, and then it will be set so that the next time I start my machine up, it will be there. I can just do the sys ctl minus p, and it suddenly loads that and it sets it.
So that's another thing you can do with the kernel. So if I go over to my proc directory, you can see once again, all these files and inside of there, you can go in and set system variables with the sys. You can also take a look at things like your file systems, your IRQs, um, SCSI drives, drivers, and just interact with different things in here. So I hope this gives you an idea of what the proc directory is and how you can interact with it and do stuff. And there you go.